everyone, it's Maggie Pat, and this week we are doing a short vlog series. I asked my friends for questions about gaming, because I haven't been gaming that much, and so I figure I still have plenty to say, even if I can't get games to a table. Uh, today's question comes from Benny Sperling, who's a friend of mine um, out in Texas. He's also a fabulous game designer. His last game, I believe, was Yakitori, which is a really interesting little worker placement game. It's like a very light economics game. It was done as a short print run from Dap Concepts. Um, they went on to do another project in the same vein with Grant Rodiak called Druids. Um, Benny is super fabulous. Can't recommend following along with him enough. Um, he does some really interesting game design and thought processes, and he's a really cute little boy. Um, but his question today was, why do people care about theme so much? Um, so... I had to take a moment. I actually vlogged this already, just kind of speak out loud and try to get my thoughts in order, because theme is one of the least important factors in my playing a game. Um, if anything, to me, the only thing that's going to happen with particular themes is it's going to make me not play a game. Um, something like the Manhattan Project is something I've never wanted to play or played, um, because I find the theme abhorrent. Um, I just, I don't want to do that. <laughs> So, uh, if, if there's any one thing that's going to happen with me and theme, it's just going to be something that would turn me off of a game. I think a lot of people view theme in a specific way. For me, I look at mechanisms and happenings over the table, not inside the game. So I can remember when my friend and I had a negotiation and they paid me an extra $5 and they took this little placement and I didn't notice that it was going to give them an extra victory point and then they won. Um, I can tell those stories and those anecdotes really easily and those are usually mechanism based, but I think a lot of people want the theme of the game to build the stories. They want to be a character who gets a rock and a chicken and learns how to fish and it turns out that they win because their fish is the biggest one at the very end of the game, and it was all because of um, the witch that they met halfway through. And so, for them, the theme built their evening in a context for them. I, in particular, just don't want or need that context. I would much prefer to kind of live in this world instead of another one. But, I mean, that's the same thought that goes into movies and television shows and plays. Like, how immersive do people want things to be in general? I think people like that escapism. Um, even when you play a game like uh, World of Warcraft, those were escapisms, and you were this character, and you met these people. I was one of those people that just skipped through all the text, and I figured out where my quest was, and I went and you know, did the thing, but I never really knew why. And most of the bigger, higher plot points of World of Warcraft were kind of lost on me. Um, one thing I will say about theme is that it does seem like, just like what, what I was saying at the beginning, is that some themes do seem to turn people off of a game. Um, some people really enjoy a specific theme or two, but like farming, no big deal. But as soon as you're making dresses or you're... Um, putting on fashion shows, the theme comes up more than not. I've seen a lot of people on both sides of the argument for games like Rococo or Prada Porter with traditionally effeminate themes. And the pendulum kind of swings both ways. Some people just say they, they can't get into it, they can't um, they can't empathize with making dresses or putting on fashion shows. And you see the pendulum swing the other way where people are kind of patting themselves on the back because they played Rococo despite the theme. You know, just, um, and at no point do I sit there and call them out as like, oh, so you've been an alien before? Oh, so you've been a rural farmer in the middle of Germany before? Um, they seem to easily look past certain types of themes, but those ones just stick out so much because they're not common in our gaming. Right now, commonly, you can fight zombies, you can wrestle with the old ones, you can beat Sherlock, you can do a lot of things very commonly that most people wouldn't be able to empathize with in their everyday lives, but because fashion, clothing, makeup, anything seen as traditionally effeminate is not a common theme, those things 
tend to stand out and tend to bring controversy. Um, I was really excited the other year when Quilt Show got announced. I was like, oh man, that's so cool. They're going to start getting into crafting hobbies and stuff. And Quilt Show ended up not being a great game in my opinion. But then Patrick came out from Uwe. And he's a huge designer. And at no point have I heard anyone putting down Patchwork based on its theme. But it's so close. It's so adjacent to Rococo's theme that I'm very surprised that that never caused any kind of controversy. I don't know what happened. Um, but I, I think overall theme is a very interesting subject that, um, that games have developed over time. The importance of theme. And I guess they've always been important, but I never... I personally never realized that games had themes. It just didn't occur to me until I got into the hobby and I started seeing it be one of the bullet points when people were doing reviews or talking about a game. They would always bring up the theme and how immersive it was and how well it fit with the me mechanisms. For me, growing up, I just... Monopoly was where you roll the die, you move your piece, and you bought the property, you auctioned it. Like For me, for some reason, there was always a disconnect between the things I was doing with the board and the pieces and the fact that you were supposed to be a real estate developer and you were supposed to be doing all these other things. Like you read the card and yes, there's some flavor in there, but I never quite understood that that was supposed to speak to me in a different way. And I'm a theater kid. I, I really like stories and themes. And I read a lot of fiction. I don't read a lot of nonfiction except for biographies. So I don't think it's because I'm without imagination. I just, I, I never understood that the thing, the activity that me, I was doing was supposed to project me into a different place. And so it's, it's really interesting for me these days that, uh, how important it is to people. It's some, some people, it's their top one or two pieces of a game for importance. And so, um, I would love to hear your thoughts below. I feel like I just rambled at you a lot. Um, <laughs> if you have any other questions or any other suggestions for future vlogs, please leave them below and I will get to them as soon as I can. Bye.